Today I'm going to show you how to create advanced iOS shortcuts using APIs. And the project is going to be an alternative to MyFitnessPal, that is a nutrition data logger. And what we're going to do is output data in a JSON format as well as loading it into HealthKit. Now I'm running this on my iPad at the moment, so I'm going to have to switch to an iPhone later in order to add HealthKit compatibility. But for now, the extra screen real estate will be useful. So I'm just going to create this new shortcut. And the way I'm going to start off is by organizing things. I want to create different sections. That way the code is very clear. So let's start off with a few comments and a few nothing commands. This is just going to segment out the code into particular sections. So I'm going to just add a few sections in and I'll come back in a second. So I'm using these nothing commands in order to segment out the code and I'm putting comments at the top to title these sections. So I'm going to have the first section as user input, then we're going to make the API call, we will format the data and then output the data. And the reason I want to do user input up top is that it just makes the experience of using the shortcut a little bit better. So doing the API call and formatting the data can actually take some time. And if your user needs to make inputs intermittently, you're going to have them waiting, staring at the screen, doing nothing in between their inputs. Versus here, where I have the user input right up front, you get all of their input right away, and then you can just leave the application to run as it needs to. So the first thing we're going to need to do is have them scan the barcode of the product they want. And we're gonna save that as a variable. And we're going to call this variable barcode. We're also going to need to ask them for a serving size. So we're going to ask for input And we're going to ask for a number with the prompt servings. Now, looking ahead a little bit, I know how this is going to play out. I'll show you this in a minute, but for now, just trust me that all serving sizes are going to be 100 grams or milliliters. So everything that you will input here will be in increments of 100 grams. And there will be no default number. We do allow decimals and no negative numbers. Great, and let's save that as another variable. And we'll call it serving. Now that is all of the user input we need and we will be using that input later. So next we need to make the API call, and I am using this. This is called Open Food Facts, and it's an open source project that collects barcodes and matches them with nutrition and product information. And we can see that they have an API that we can use that gives us a JSON output. And if we follow this example link, this is what we're going to be getting. And this is rather unfortunate. So a lot of information is here, which makes it useful for getting whatever it is you need, but rather difficult to work with at the same time. But that's okay, we will be managing that in the shortcut. And what we're going to need to do is copy that URL, and I am going to save it as a text field. I'm going to paste it there. And now we're going to get the contents of that URL. And this is our API request. Now this is using the RESTful API protocol, which allows us to specify different methods, get, post, put, etc., etc. If you're not familiar with RESTful API, I would recommend learning something about that because it's extremely useful. But what we need to know here is that we're going to be using the get method. And what this means is that all of the relevant information that we are going to send to this API is going to be in the URL itself. And all we need to do here is remove this number at the end and replace it with our barcode. Put that slash back and we'll put our barcode in there. 
So the barcode we scan will be put in the URL, which will then be made into this Git request. And let's just do an alert just to see the output. Alerts are essentially print statements, and print statements are very useful for debugging and making sure that things are going well. So I am going to run this. I am going to scan this lovely can of soup that I have here. We're going to say we have one serving, and we do want to give it access. And as we can see, it has found my chicken noodle soup. Now, if you're not familiar with JSON, this can look rather intimidating, but it's pretty straightforward and easy to understand. What we have here are key value pairs. So if you look at the very first thing in there, we have status in quotes, colon, one, comma. So the comma is separating out these key value pairs. And the key here is status and the value is one. And if we look a little bit further, you see it has code 4099, et cetera, et cetera, and then product, colon, and then another curly bracket. And what this is doing is basically embedding one set of key value pairs within another. So we're going to want to extract these things out one at a time. And the first thing that I want is product. So I don't need the status and I don't need the code, but I do need the product information. So let's extract that. What we're going to want to do is convert that output into a dictionary. And let's get rid of our alert. So we're going to extract that information that the website is sending us as a dictionary, which just allows us to reference these key value pairs. And what I want to do is extract from that dictionary a certain value. And the value I want, as we saw, is product. And let's do another alert. And I want that dictionary value. Scan the soup. Serving size. And here we go. We've, we've now isolated this portion of the information. And the first thing I can see, I can't really highlight anything here, but product name EN, Chunky Chef's Cupboard Chicken Noodle. So I want the actual product name. Now before I begin extracting values here, what I want to do is save this as a variable. And the reason for that is that I'm going to be referencing that section of the data multiple times. And doing the thing where you select the magic variable here and it gives you all these options, that will also work, but it makes your code rather difficult to look at. So what I'm going to do instead is use this variable name. Now I can go in and extract a particular value from that dictionary. So the key I want is product underscore name underscore en. And let's show an alert for that just to be sure that I have gotten the correct one. And there it is. Chunky Chef's Cupboard Chicken Noodle Soup. Now I want to save that as a variable. And we're going to call this name. Now I also want to get the nutrition information. So let's change this to product, run it again, scan the soup, one serving, well, 11 servings. <laughs> and actually, there is so much information here that the alert can't show it all. So I'm going to cancel that, and I'm going to look back at the example API. What I'm looking for is some evidence of what I'm actually wanting to find. So that is to say a nutrient name, something like sodium or carbohydrates. And here I have found it. So once I see something like sodium, I can follow this back 
until I find the containing element. So we can see this curly bracket here at the end is marking the beginning of that dictionary, and that dictionary is called nutriments because spelling. So what I want to do is extract nutriments from that dictionary. Nutriments from, did I not save it? Oh, I'm doing this in the wrong place. From product. And I want to create another variable. And I'm going to call it nutrients because I care about spelling. So the thing with JSON is that key value pairs, the keys have to be unique. So they used nutriments here, and I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that that is because nutrients is used elsewhere. So we won't judge them too harshly here. And if we look at this, we can just do another alert to get nutrients. Scan the soup. Six servings, doesn't matter yet. And here we can see that we have the nutrients. So the next step is going to be to take this dictionary and actually extract all of the relevant information. So looking at this, we can see that there is some redundant information. So what I'm going to want to do is decide which pieces of this to actually save. And if we take proteins, for example, again, I can't highlight things to actually bring your attention to them. But at the bottom third of the alert, you can see proteins underscore 100G. And then towards the bottom, third line up, you can see proteins value. And then above that, towards the end of the line, proteins. And proteins, proteins value, and proteins per 100 grams are all exactly the same. So I don't need all of those. So what I'm going to want to do is extract out just one of them. And the commonality between them is that they have an underscore. So I can just extract out the ones that don't have an underscore, and those are my relevant pieces of data. But towards the top, actually the very top, you can see sodium underscore unit in grams. And I probably do want the unit. So I'm going to need to handle redundant data that can be mistaken for useful data. And so that's going to involve a nested if statement. So what I'm going to want to do is do a loop. So repeat with each. And we're now in data formatting. So in nutrients. Now, actually, before this, I actually want to set a text field. And this text field is going to be our custom JSON output. And every JSON file starts with curly brackets. And what we're going to say is, quote, whoops, not that, quote, product, end quote, and then we're going to put the product name. Then we'll separate it with a comma, a space, and now I can say serving, colon, no space, serving. Now it would be useful to also have the date, so I will say date, and we're going to say current date. We'll format it. We'll do a custom format, clear that, and I'm just going to do year as four digits, month as two digits, and then day as two digits. And I forgot the colon, put another comma, and we'll also have time. Again, we'll say current date, date format, custom, we'll clear it out, we'll say capital H, capital H for hour, minute, and second. comma, and now we're going to have our nutrients. 
and this we're going to add as a dictionary. So we will add another curly bracket. And then we want to get into this loop where we're going to add each one one at a time. So we're going to repeat over the items in nutrients, but we actually want to loop over it as a dictionary. And then what we want, not that, and instead of getting a dictionary, we want to get the keys. So that is the name of each item. So first we want to check if it contains an underscore. Contains underscore. Okay, so if it doesn't, we can simply add the key value pair to nutrients. So our text will have the repeat item in quotes, followed by a colon, and then what we're going to actually need to do is extract that value. So get dictionary value, and the key is going to be the repeat item, and we want it from the dictionary nutrients. And what we're going to do is take that. So that is going to give us just the base values, but we also want the units. So we'll do another if statement. So if that item contains unit, not capitalized, then we're going to do the same thing. Not that. Again, we want repeat item in the dictionary nutrients. And we're going to add it as a text field. So in quotes, we're going to have the repeat item, a colon, and then that value. So what this is going to do is if it contains an underscore, it will check if that also contains unit. And if it does, then we're going to get the repeat item and the value, so the key value pair for units. And we'll also get the key value pair for just the base item, so proteins, sugars, salt, etc. Now, this is going to add them just to a single text field. And what we really want is to add them to this text here. But we need to do this carefully because we want it to maintain its JSON formatting. So what I'm going to do is set a variable. And I'm going to set this to field. And I'm also going to set this to field. And this variable will be reset every time the loop runs. It's either going to set it as this field, or it's going to set it as this field. And in order for this to work, I actually want to create a blank one as well. And that will be clear in a second why. Now, at the end of each loop, what we're going to do is combine the variable field with the text up here. So if it has an underscore and is not the unit, it's going to combine it with this blank one. If it has units, it will combine it with this one. And if it doesn't have units, it will combine it with this one. So the reason we need this blank one is so that we can just at the end generically say, combine this with field, and it will either combine it with the key value pair we want, or it will combine it with nothing. So we'll go down to the bottom, and we're going to say, combine text at the end of the loop. And we're going to say we want, did we set this variable up here? 
We did not. We need to set this to a variable. We're going to call this the JSON. And then we can come down here and combine JSON with field. And we're going to combine it with a comma. So let's do an alert just to see how this looks. And let's take a look at the JSON. We'll give it one serving as usual. So our final output looks like this. Or, no it doesn't, this is, this is from a previous one. This is, I forgot to delete it. So we'll just say okay there. Let it run through this. And here we go. Now it's not getting the product name and we're getting too much information. So it seems to be giving us everything. And why is it doing that? So in any project of this scale, you're going to run into bugs and learning how to debug them is as important as understanding what each of these commands do in and of themselves. And one way to debug is with the print statements or in this case, alert. So I'm going to show an alert and I want it to just show me the repeat index. And this is just going to show me everything that it is running through. And before I forget, let's get rid of this. So let's run it, scan the soup, one serving, number one, number two. Okay, so that's doing numbers for the index. So instead of the index, let's look at the repeat item. Scan the soup, one serving. Okay, so it seems to be getting the correct item. So now I'm going to walk through the logic of this loop. Knowing that the items are correct, I'm gonna walk through the logic just to see if there's an obvious problem. Okay, so we set a blank variable, then we check, oh, here it is, field. So we don't want field, we want the repeat item. Okay, so let's, let's give that a try. One as always. Again, we're getting too much information. So what I'm going to do here is another alert. And what I wanna do is see what it's getting out of that. So that part seems to be working. It's getting the actual value for these different nutrients. So I'm going to cancel it. And I believe I see the problem. What I need to do is set this variable. So what needs to happen is that this variable JSON gets longer and longer with each loop. But I was not actually saving what I was combining here at the end. And this doesn't seem to be what is causing that problem, but it definitely is a problem. So let's see the output when I run that. Oh, is one. Oh, okay, I need to take that out. And it crashed. That's okay, it crashes sometimes. So let's come back here. Don't show me that alert. Run it. Scan the soup. Two servings this time. Interesting. <laughs> Perhaps my original JSON is the problem. Instead of product, it should be name. That was a silly mistake. But again, learning how to debug is an important thing, and you will make silly mistakes like that, so that's all right. But the key is being able to recover from bugs, not to not make them at all. It's a silly mistake. And here we go. Product, we have the name, Chunky Chef's Cover, Chicken Noodle Soup, four servings, the date is today, the time is now, 
the nutrients, we have another dictionary with sodium units, grams. Interesting. Three commas. Why would it do that? We're getting pretty close. Um, we have too many commas. So at the beginning of the nutrients dictionary, we have an additional comma. And then the sodium unit of grams isn't good. Multiple commas. And then fat unit as well. So let me take a look here. First thing I noticed is that when we are getting this unit, the unit should also be in quotes. So any text value, any string value in a JSON needs to be in quotes. So we're going to have to add that. And let's see where it's putting the comma. Putting it in the quotes or after the quotes? One serving. Well, that seems to have fixed it. Except with salt. For some reason, there's a number of commas there. And kcal. So here's the problem. Those commas are coming from this, this blank one. Since it's still combining text down here, and it's combining them using a comma, we're getting additional commas. So I need a different way of doing this. So what I can do here is add another if statement, and we'll put my and if down here, otherwise we're not going to do anything. And if field has any value. So I'm not sure if this means it has no value, just a blank text field. It may be that the text field object is a value. Uh, so let's test it. There's, there's more we can do if it doesn't work, but so we're going to do one and that seems to have done it. Great. So by checking to confirm that our field has a value, then we can combine it with commas without getting additional ones. But there is still one small problem. If I scan this one more time, one serving, we'll let it run through. What you can see is and on the second line down, the very end, nutrients. That opens up a new dictionary, and that dictionary begins with a comma. I need to get rid of that comma. Also, I need to have two end curly brackets on the end, one to close this inner dictionary of nutrients, and one to close the outer dictionary of the product or entry as a whole. We have our text variable JSON, but let's create another one. Text variable, it'll be blank. We're going to call it nutrients. And we'll let's call it nutrients list, just to specify. Now, rather than combining JSON, I'm going to combine, well, okay. I'm going to combine nutrients list with field with a comma. And then at the very end of the repeat, I'm going to make a new text field. And actually, I want to set the variable nutrients list there. And then at the end of the repeat, I'm going to have my two closing curly brackets. And then I'm going to combine text again. And what I want to do is take that. I want the original JSON. Then I want the nutrients list. And then I want the text I just wrote. And we're going to combine it with a custom nothing. We're not going to all the commas that we need are already there. We'll set this variable to JSON. And that should work. One serving. Okay. 
we got the product name, we got the number of servings, we have the date, the time, the nutrients, but we still have a comma at the beginning of that. Closes the curly brackets, which is good, but why are we still getting a comma? Likely the same problem as before, where I was adding this blank text field. Since this nutrients list text field is already blank, it's adding the blank and starting with a comma. So let's do this. We'll add an if. And we're going to do this and this. So if nutrients list has any value, we're going to combine it with that. Otherwise, we're going to set nutrients list to field. So basically on the first go through, we have this blank nutrients list. And then here when we combine things together, if it already has anything in there, which it doesn't initially, it will combine it with a comma. If it does, or sorry, if it does not have anything in there initially, then it's just going to set it to field. So we'll get that first one without a comma. And this should give us the output that we're looking for. Scan the soup. Okay, no comma. End with two curly brackets. This is looking good. I think we've done it. Okay, the last step for now is going to be to have some output. So what I wanna do is file, and I wanna append it to a file. And the file path is going to be slash nutrition.json. And we will make a new line. And I'm going to append the JSON variable. Scan the soup. Now it's saying operation failed at the end here, not because it failed to add it to the file, but because it failed to load it here in this text box. So if I run this again, I should still be able to append things to the end of the file. Okay, let's check the file again. And there we go, we have it in there twice. So now we are successfully outputting this into a data file. And this you can load into any program you want that can read JSON and utilize it. Unfortunately, it is loading it in as a, uh, if you load in the file itself, it's going to load in this whole thing. And that's not going to work. So what you're going to have to do is read it line by line. Now here on my iPad, it looks like that first entry takes up one, two, three, four lines, but it actually doesn't. The way that your programming language will read this is it, it's going to look for the new line character, which does not exist on that string until the very end of that first entry. So even though it's displaying right now as four lines, your computer is going to read it as one line. So what you can do is read it in one line at a time and convert that to a JSON object in your programming language. And that's how it's going to work. So I'm going to delete this for the demo in just a minute. And now the last part is going to be to output this to HealthKit, which is going to be a little bit tedious. Additionally, I need to add a import question. So at the very bottom here, is this service. And we want to let the user specify the service and the file name. And the default is going to be iCloud Drive. And we also want them to specify a file name. And the default will be slash nutrition.json. Okay, let's name it log nutrition data. We'll pick a fancy icon here. Let's see, I was tempted by that carrot there, but 
I think we can do better. Let's let's use this one. And I think it should be blue. There we go. Okay. And for now that's done. Before I switch to my iPhone though, I've noticed a little problem in our creation of this JSON object. Right here, I am putting in the dictionary value, but I am not accounting for the serving size. So what I want to do is calculate what that dictionary value is times the serving. And instead of that, I want to put in the calculation result. Welcome back. Now the screen is going to have to be vertical from now on, and I may also have a change in audio quality, but this is a really nice phone, so it should be fine. So the first thing I noticed was that my import question had a bit of a problem. See, it has an extra slash there, so I'm just going to delete that and we're good to go. Okay, now I've already done a lot of work to make this information usable in this JSON format. So rather than going through a lot of work to reformat it or go through the same thing that I was sent by the API again, I'm actually just going to load what I already created. So we're going to create a new dictionary and we're gonna say get dictionary from input. We're gonna say clear and I want it from JSON. So now JSON is loaded as a dictionary. And what I can do is in HealthKit, Actually not there, let's do apps, health, log health sample. I want it to log, let's do dietary energy. And we saw that it was using kilocalories. And the value I want is going to be a value from that dictionary. So what I'm going to do is get dictionary value. And I want Okay, I'm, I'm skipping steps here. So I want a variable first. I want to set this to data. And the reason I'm doing a variable here is that I'm going to be referencing this multiple times. So since I'm going to be referencing it a lot, I want to specify it as a variable. That way I don't have to keep doing this magic variable stuff and making the code look worse. So what I'm going to need to do is see how my output has been formatted. That way I can use the keys specified to get the correct values. And the key I'm looking for is energy. And what I'm going to do is log that dictionary value as kilocalories with the current date. And I'm going to repeat that multiple times for all of the things I want to add. And unfortunately, it does not seem to line up one to one with what you can get in HealthKit, but I'm going to do as many as I can. So I'm going to do those and I will come back in a second. Having added the health samples, I've now noticed two problems in our code. And that is just an inevitable fact of programming. You will have bugs and you're going to need to solve them. So our date here needs to be in quotes, as does the time. So JSON does not recognize these as objects, so they need to be in quotes, so strings. Also, I have forgotten to encase the name of the product in quotes. Oh, the inevitabilities of user error. So we'll say done there. Also, my nutrients data is stored as an embedded dictionary in this JSON object. So the outer dictionary contains the name of the product and all of that stuff. And then it has another dictionary inside it of this nutrient data. So I actually need to say, get dictionary value. And I need nutrients and I'm going to set this variable data to this one. And with that, all of our problems are solved and everything is working. 
So I'm going to do a brief demo of this, and I am presuming that a number of people watching will be skipping to this. So it might be a bit awkward if you've been watching this whole time as I transition, pretending that you are just starting now. So this is my nutrition data shortcut, and it's going to basically take the place of something like MyFitnessPal. That is, you'll be able to scan the barcode of any food product, enter in the serving size that you have, and it will log all of the data in your HealthKit app. Or it will also export it to a JSON file for you to import into any program that you like. So what you're going to do is scan the barcode. You will put in a serving, and these were always going to be in units of 100 grams or milliliters. So you'll put in your serving size, and then it's going to hit this API from openfoodfacts.org. Uh, good shout out to them. They did a great job making their database and making it available for people like me and you to use. So thank you to them. Then it's going to extract all of the information from that API call. It will format it into a JSON object that will then be saved onto your device. Uh, you can specify where in the setup, but by default, it's going to go in your shortcuts folder under nutrition.json under iCloud Drive. And then it will take this information and log it as health samples. Now, at the moment, the only things it can sample in HealthKit are dietary energy, carbohydrates, protein, fat, sodium, saturated fat, and sugars. And it will log all of this in HealthKit for you. Also, for those of you who are planning to use the actual JSON file, note that it is appending each JSON object to a new line. And that means that when you load these JSON objects in, you can't just load the entire file. You'll have to do it one line at a time, but it is logged in such a way that that should be easy to do. If you can just read one line, that's a JSON object. The next line is another JSON object. So let's run through the app. I'm going to scan my can of chicken noodle soup. I'm going to say 2.45 servings. That's because the actual serving size of this soup is 245 grams. And this app is always doing things in units of 100 grams. So if I am having 245 grams of soup, it's 2.45 servings. Done. It's going to create my JSON. It'll log it in HealthKit. And then if I go to HealthKit, I can see that my information has been added for today. So there we go. And if I run through the app one more time, I'll pull up the camera and I will transition smoothly into self-promotion. So if you're just here for the shortcut, that's fine. I hope it's useful for you and I hope you really enjoy it. I'll ask that you leave a like on the video to help other people find it. But if you are interested in the project and you'd like to see more like it, then you might want to subscribe to my channel. At the moment, it's pretty young and most of the videos are tutorials of me setting up old laptops as servers, but in the coming weeks I'm going to be using those servers to do some bigger projects that you might be interested in. So if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, please do, and if you're particularly enthusiastic, you can hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy the shortcut.